in today's video, I'm going to finish showing you the haul of books that I brought home from the Hot Comics and Collectibles Warehouse Blowout Sale, where they sold all of their back issues for just 25 cents. Check it out! Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. I've got a bunch of 25 cent back issues that I'm gonna show you today. These all came from a sale hosted by a local shop. It was called a warehouse blowout sale, and they were just trying to move inventory. So they rented out a space, loaded it with dozens and dozens of long boxes, with randomly assorted comics from all ages and in all kinds of conditions, some bagged and boarded, some just raw. And it was just a blast going through those boxes. I wound up finding something like 180 books and been working my way slowly but surely through the entire haul to show you everything. This is in fact part four of that overall haul and it's the final part. So we're gonna wrap things up today. And if you haven't seen any of the first three, don't worry, I've treated each one kind of like its own individual haul. So there's no need to see one before another or anything like that. So I'll have links to those other videos just in case you wanna go look at those later. But for now, let's go ahead and round out this haul from Hot Comics. Starting things off here, got a few kind of random annuals from the 90s. I got this Web of Spider-Man annual from 1990. This is annual number, what annual? No, annual number six is part three of this story. I got this Spectacular Spider-Man from 92, which is part two of this story called The Hero Killers. Got the Web of Spider-Man, Annual 8 from 92. It's got part three of that story. And then I also grabbed this Avengers Annual from 1988. That's just a cool cover, uh, classic cover there. But the reason I grabbed these was primarily, uh, in addition to them being just a quarter, it was something that just struck me nostalgically because these all come from that time where I was really at the peak of collecting back uh, when I was, you know, young and collecting. And so these just have a nice, uh, nice nostalgic vibe for me. I like these annuals. I like the the square bound nature of these, and it's just a, a fun look back at these early days of when I was collecting. So just a, a fun little addition there. No no deep significant reason for any of these four. They were just a fun little pickup. And I will apologize if you hear more background noise than usual. That's because uh, we're getting close to Thanksgiving and we've got uh, extra bodies in the house. So the kids are coming home from college and there's friends around. So there's, there's a lot more activity going on in the house this week than there is normally. So uh, that's what that is if you hear that. Uh, moving on here, we've got Spider-Man issue number 18. This is from the first adjectiveless title, Spider-Man, that kicked off with Todd McFarlane writing and penciling. And then I think it was around issue 17, maybe, the transition to Eric Larson. And I have most of the issues on either side of this one. This was just a, a singular hole sitting in my run. And so I figured I would pick that up. Great price, great cover with uh, Spidey and Ghost Rider there. Next up, I have got a smattering of random X-Men limited series. I mean, how many X-Men limited series have there been over the decades? It's probably really hard to count and I seem to never run out of new ones to find like they're just when I thought I found most of them then I'll come across something I'd never heard of before earlier this year this was one of those examples never knew this existed X-Men Ronin six part uh, actually turned out to be a five part limited series this says two of six but it must have changed midstream because then here I also found issue five of five from that limited series with these two acquisitions, I now have four of the five parts of this story, just missing the first issue. So I'll continue to hunt for that. Don't know if the story's any good or not. It's just a kind of an oddball limited series featuring the X-Men in a real manga kind of a style. So just fun since I love the X-Men so much and I'll go ahead for a quarter and pick up these limited series all day long. Let's keep with that theme. Here's a limited series from the 80s that I never owned, either new or 
picked up as a back issue until now. This is X-Men and the Micronauts, and they had issues one, two, and three. And these are in really nice condition. Got a couple newsstands, one direct edition, just missing issue four now to round this one out, but that was a nice find to get three of the four at least all at once. More X-Men limited series, you say? Why, yes, I have more. We've got this one, X-Men Die by the Sword. What I can tell about this one is that it seems to be some kind of crossover between Excalibur during the time when they were called New Excalibur and then the Exiles, because both those teams are introduced kind of in the first page there. So maybe some event uh, dealing with those two teams. Don't know anything more than that. I like Captain Britain. I like Psylocke and Betsy Braddock. So I figured definitely had to pick this up. At the sale that day, they had issue one, uh, two. I think I think I already have three, four, and five, or I've picked them up since these, but have this complete limited series now. Like these covers, really, really nice looking. But wait, there's more. The New Mutants Forever, another limited series. This is just a kind of a cool and creepy Bill Sienkiewicz cover. You can see his signature down there on the bottom. This was one, I, I don't know the story. I wasn't necessarily looking for this one, but again, at a quarter and it's a cool variant, I'll go ahead and pick that up. I think I, I still need some of the issues though to complete this uh, limited series. And that's right, we're not done yet. X-Men Kingbreaker. This appears to be a tie-in limited series to the War of Kings event. I haven't read that event or this limited series, so I'll have to dive into that a little bit more when I get closer to reading it here. On this sale day, I picked up issue two, three, and four, but I think I had found issue one at an earlier sale, you know, sometime earlier this year. So now I've been able to complete that tie-in limited series. Now we're gonna move on from the X-Men limited series here and shift gears to this. Uh, it's an ongoing title, but I got it for the tie-in connection to the event. This is Mighty Avengers issue seven, ties into the Secret Invasion event story. And I also picked up issue 18 from the same volume, another tie-in to the Secret Invasion story. I've mentioned in earlier videos that Secret Invasion is an event that I have put together uh, as single issues, as back issues. And earlier this year, I read that event, I enjoyed that event. So now I'd like to expand that a little bit further and get some of the, the more significant tie-in issues. And those come in the form of the Mighty Avengers and then I think New Avengers is the other title. And really what I'm using as my guide there is I went online, looked up the Secret Invasion Omnibus and checked out the table of contents. And that's how I'll build out some of these runs that I want to hunt for and these stories, I should say, that I want to hunt for. I'll find the Omnibus Collected Edition, make a list of all the single issues, and then I'll, I'll hunt those down. So that's been a fun thing to hunt for. I think I only need one more issue from the Mighty Avengers to complete that tie-in, but I still need most of the new Avengers issues. But then... Uh, Continue to hunt for those, and then I'll be able to read these tie-in stories. You know, when you have a quarter sale of randomly assorted books, you get a real mishmash of runs and publishers and issues, and you find some really cool things like this too. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures. This was from like 92. This is issue uh, number 34 here, newsstand. And yeah, July of 92. And I only have a couple of the issues from this era of Turtles, and but I'm never gonna say no to those, especially when they're in good condition and for this kind of a price. Nothing key about this, just a fun buy. You can also find really good variants at a sale like this. Battle Chasers is a series, it was a nine issue limited series, 10 if you count the zero issue, that was done by Joe Matarera back in, 
was this late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in there, under uh, Cliffhanger, which is Wildstorm here. And I never read it at the time. It's just become one of those limited series or one of those short run series. It wasn't a limited series by design uh, that I decided to look for because I like Joe Mad's art. Historically got into him when he was doing the X-Men back in the 90s. And so this is one of his creator owned titles. And I thought it'd be fun to go hunt down. It took a while, but I have now completed that entire Battle Chasers series. And I've read the whole thing, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna say no to a cool variant that I find now and again. So here's a variant to issue number seven. This is a J. Scott Campbell cover. And I have heard word that he would continue this story. I thought that would be maybe earlier this year. Who knows if it'll ever actually happen. That might be fun if he gets to, to round it out. Cause I will say it did leave off open-ended. It did not close the story out. And I think it went through some publishing delays and things like that as it got later in the issues anyway. And I will admit that as you read the story, it starts out a little bit tighter, but then it gets kind of looser as it goes and it, it, it loses a little of its smoothness and its flow as it goes. But still it'd be nice to see him be able to come back and, and finish this story out and end it for us. But for now, I'm, I'm happy uh, picking up not only the issues, but the variants as well. Working on the Chris Bacalo run from Generation X and found a couple more issues at the sale. These were raw as you see them here. Got issues 18 and 19. But I got these for two reasons. One is the Chris Bacalo tie-in. But then secondly, it's because they are part of the Onslaught Impact story. And it's another story where I have some of the issues from the Onslaught era of things. This 96 era, this was right around the time where I was dropping off and collecting. Uh, and so there's a lot of holes. And now I'm going back and filling in some of those things. And I think I used an omnibus as well as my guide to remind me of these issues and add them to my wish list. So double, double check marks on getting these. At a quarter sale like this, you can also find some really recent releases. Not sure why this was in the sale bin since this just came out a little earlier this year, probably because of the damage here on the spine and it may have been one that they pulled off their regular shelf and then just stuck in a, in a box and it made it into the quarter bin. I passed on ordering this new. I order my new books through DCBS online and I've gotten more in the habit of saying no to issues like this, the Omega issue, if I'm not really committed to the event. It's just one more thing to have to buy and isn't necessarily critical reading, but I really do like Daredevil. Uh, I thought this was a decent event, especially because it continued out of the last volume of Daredevil, where Elektra started uh, running around as Daredevil while Matt Murdock was in prison. So she's got the costume now as well. And now they're continuing that in the current volume of Daredevil. And when I saw this for just a quarter, I figured, what the heck, I'll go ahead and pick that up. And now I can at least read the story. But as I'm looking at it more, it's got this chip on the spine here. I'm almost certain that's why that wound up uh, just in a back issue bin like that instead of getting sold new. Here's another Daredevil pickup. Uh, or at least I picked it up because of Daredevil. It's it, this crossover, does that say Magdalena? Uh, the Magdalena and Daredevil, Man Without Fear, number one. I think this is just a one shot. I don't know anything about the story. I had never heard of this before. Just came across it as I was hunting and it looked cool. And so when it's a quarter, it's very easy to say, I'll, you know, let me just stick it on my pile now and I'll ask questions later. So that was a just a fun little bonus pickup. All right, now the rest of what you're going to see from this haul is all Fantastic Four. I'm working on a variety of Fantastic Four issues from just about every volume. Not necessarily every issue, although I will say if I continue to find them for 25 cents a piece, I will probably get all the issues. That was kind of an example of what happened at the sale on this day. They had some of the issues that I was specifically looking for, but then they had a bunch of other issues that were just in nice shape. And so I figured what the heck for 25 cents, I'll bring those home and 
is build out my Fantastic Four run. So starting in volume one here, I am working on the John Byrne era of Fantastic Four, though I've double dipped a little bit and I did recently receive in the mail the, uh, the first volume of the John Byrne Fantastic Four Omnibus and I'm working my way through reading that right now and I'm expecting the second volume. Uh, I think that comes out in like January or February. So I'll be getting that as well. That'll allow me to read the whole thing, give me a nice oversized artwork presentation of those stories and it'll look nice on the shelf too. But I'll continue to, to hunt for these single issues when I can find them in good shape and at a good price. So I've got a couple issues from his era uh, of writing and drawing today. This issue 269 and then this issue here of 286. I did have a copy of this already. This may be an upgrade to what I already have, or it may be that I had the direct edition and now I have the newsstand. But this is the one where uh, the return of Jean Grey, and you got this crossover with X Factor. So got this both for the Fantastic Four side of it and the X Factor X-Men tie-in as well. Fast forward a little bit beyond the John Byrne era, you've got issue 349 newsstand nice art adams and this was when he was drawing and you get the this is part of the time where you had the new fantastic four with uh who's that spidey uh hulk ghost rider and wolverine so that was a fun find and one of the issues obviously i did not have and they also had this issue 353 walt simonson doing the the artwork here and i've wanted it for that reason this one i hadn't found recently because it had spiked in value because of the Loki series, but happy that I could find it in this quarter bin at the sale this day. And you're gonna see several of these Fantastic Fours that are just raw, no bag or board, but they stayed in really nice shape, which is not often for um, bagless, boardless comics in long boxes, because even just from people looking through those boxes, they can start to get ripped and you get spine ticks and all kinds of things, but pages are nice and white. Colors are good, and it, the spine, everything's in really nice shape here. So very happy to find that. And then we just kind of continue through with several issues. Got 354, another Walt Simonson issue, 357. And this is what I mean by issues I wasn't looking for now. After those specific ones I just mentioned, uh, I wasn't looking to collect the rest of uh, Fantastic Four Volume 1, but at 25 cents a piece and in really good condition, I'm definitely going to grab those for now worry about it later i like this cover on 361 with doom over the city and i like the christmas theme there as well 362 these are kind of cool covers as well where you get the characters in the foreground in color and then the black and white or grayscale kind of cityscape in the back there's 363 364 so Good little chunk from the 350s and 360s there from Fantastic Four Volume 1, but we're not quite done. Let's jump ahead to Volume 3 of Fantastic Four. This is part of the Heroes Return era. So if you don't know, Volume 2 for Fantastic Four and a few other titles was actually outsourced to folks like uh, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, and they did 13-issue volumes of each of those titles where these heroes had supposedly where everyone thought that they had died fighting onslaught but it turns out that franklin had created a pocket franklin uh, richards had created a pocket universe and whisked all these heroes away and so what we see in that heroes reborn era is those heroes living in that pocket universe and then when the uh, the stories came back into the house of ideas at marvel there then it was heroes return back under Marvel's own editorial staff and everything got a new number one, new volumes. And so that's where this volume three kicks off. And so I'm slowly working on this volume, especially the lower issues. Chris Claremont did some writing. Uh, Salvador La Roca did some of the artwork. So I'm trying to build this out slowly. This one goes for a while and eventually resumes the legacy numbering. So you get issues that are in the uh, late 400s and 500s from this volume, but we'll we'll take it a little bite at a time. I'm, I'm sure I'll want to add more and more issues uh, to my collection, but for now we're kind of, I'm kind of focusing on these lower end issues. So I got issue two and then issue five from that volume. But then I also, uh, I think I was inspired by the last quarter sale that they did back on free comic book day. 
I found a bunch of issues from this Fantastic Four Volume 4, which only ran for like 16 issues, so it's manageable. And most of the art is done by Mark Bagley. And so for both of those reasons, I thought, well, what the heck, why don't I work on it? So made a good first, uh, you know, run at getting some of the issues at that first sale. But then at this quarter sale, they had a few more. So, and I picked up issue three, four, five. And then this other issue five, notice it says 5AU. I think this is just the, the, um, the tie-in issue to the Age of Ultron event. So that's just kind of, I don't know, sometimes they do like the point one issues and things. I guess in this case, they just did 5AU to show the Age of Ultron tie-in. So that wraps up all the Fantastic Four books, but that was good progress, both on the Fantastic Four, tons of X-Men limited series, some cool variants, and some, you know, just one-shots that were things I wasn't expecting to find, but very happy to find at just 25 cents a piece. All right, that's gonna do it for me, and that's gonna finally wrap up this massive haul of books that I brought home from Hot Comics and Collectibles when they held their most recent warehouse blowout sale. Over the course of these four videos, I really do hope you saw something that you liked, but what about you? What kinds of things are you collecting these days? Any great finds in the quarter 50 cent dollar bins? How about around Black Friday sales? Any good deals going on in your area? Let us know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.